friends. Today I'm kind of excited that I'm going to be sharing this with you today. Several of you have asked me to come up with a tutorial with Santa's face that might be simple enough. We could draw together and we could paint. So I think this one's really easy and as I'm drawing this with you today, I'm going to give you some easier uh, ways of drawing some of these things so it doesn't feel so um, complicated for you. But basically, Santa's pretty easy because he has a big beard, a mustache, and that hat. So really, all you're seeing is his little eyes. Um, so I think this is going to be somewhat easy for you my beginners so just stick with me here i do have this drawing available on my website if you would like to download the actual drawing and use um you know trace it somehow either with a light board or tracing paper or what i do all the time is just hold it up to a window and let the shun sun shine through and trace it that way <clears throat> excuse me so um, just wanted to go over some supplies real quick. If you want to, um, you know, get right to the painting, go ahead and skip forward. But for my beginners, I like to just share some of my supplies. So for drawing him, I just used, and what I'll be using today to show you some uh, sketching tips is I use these pearl wings. And the reason, as you can see, this one's almost gone. I'm going to have to order some more. This is the black wing. But the reason why I like these is this wonderful replaceable eraser as well. It's thin and um, I feel like I can get into some kind of smaller spaces than I maybe could with a regular eraser. And for the most part, most of my pencils used to look like this. I had a bunch of these. So now I get these and um, every time I pick up a pencil, it has an eraser on it. So I will get you that link. Um, I'm using my uh, Artisto paper and I'm using the nine by 12 today. This is a 140 pound 30, um, 300 GSM, uh, 140 pound cold press. And I'm using the bigger sheet because I wanted you to be able to see what I'm doing. So as you know, I love this paper. It's got such a great texture and I'm, hearing so many wonderful things from you guys. So I'm so happy because I've tested out so many student grade papers from Canson to all of them. And this for the price, I can't say enough about. So if you like your cold press paper, I think it's a good place to start for beginners. And this is just a fantastic paper. I'm also going to be using my Paul Rubens, my Lang beginner set. Um, why? Because I love the colors, number one really creamy, really vibrant. They, they aren't grainy or chalky. And this larger set, they have the smaller set, but uh, the larger set I've been using this month because it has a lot of the um, iridescence. So that's why I'm using this larger set. And this is a really reasonable price for you beginners if you don't want to start off with Winsor Newtons. I also do though have my Winsor Newton designer gouache and it's the zinc white that I'll use for some of the white in Santa's beard and um, maybe some little snowballs or something like that. I will be using today my Princeton eight round. You know, I love, I love the handle. It's so cushy and soft and velvety. I also like the short handles. That's just my thing. Um, so I have my eight and my six. Eight is my go-to. Six just has a little bit finer tip. So I'm going to be using those. But again, for you beginners, if you don't want to invest in those Princeton yet, this Degato set I've been using for at least six months, they're wonderful. Very snappy. Very nice points. You get 10 of them. So you can experiment with all the sizes. These are the Degatos and they're maybe 15 to 17 dollars there's a lot of black friday sales going on now so you can get those really really reasonable i've got my paper towel i've got my wash and my rinse water really important in watercolors you want to make sure you're getting all that paint out that pigment out as you're switching colors and i love this one it's just such quality from meaden it's not going to spill over just love it um I might use a little bit of my kneaded eraser just to erase some lines. 
And I think that's it. I am going to give you some options in painting this, um, or I'm sorry, drawing it. That might be a little bit easier. And I think aside from that, we're ready to go. So I've got my paper here that I can dab off my brush when needed. Um, and let's just go through some of the colors, which maybe are going to seem really obvious. Red, green, um, Santa's eyes are black, maybe a little bit of a pinky color. Um, so since I'm using the My Lang palette, if you're using your Winsor Newton palette, you could use Alizarin Crimson, but I'm using this uh, My Lang palette, so I'm going to use the kind of pinky red, so I'll put a little bit of that on my palette. This palette, by the way, you guys constantly ask me, um, is custom made for me by Miss Ceramics. Uh, she doesn't make them very often. If you want one, I actually have four that I have never opened. They're for my student workshops. Um, they look like this. She does these special for me with little flowers and brush rests. Um, so ask me, I might have a few of those. Um, but anyway, I'm using the rose red. I'm gonna use matter red here, which is for me a really vibrant, beautiful red might have a little bit of a pinky undertone. Let me show you that. And I'm mixing my values. Remember in watercolors, we always start lightest value to darkest, meaning more water, a more transparent, lighter pigment, maybe 80 water, 20 pigment, and then we work up to the darker values. So I'll be, yeah, this is perfect. Doesn't that look like a Santa color? And then I typically try to get, okay, there's my mid value and here's my lightest value. And I want to include all those values in my painting. Um, here is that pink. I might add that a little bit in, maybe for his little rosy cheeks and his nose. There's my lighter value. And then let's see, what other color might we have? Maybe a tiny bit of Payne's gray for like a blackish color. I don't typically use black just because it's a little bit harsh. So I usually go for the Payne's gray, which has a bluish tint to it. So I'll probably use that for some of the shadowing. There we go. Um, and let's see, what other color might I use? I think I will use a mixture of a cad yellow a yellow ochre as well for his face. So I might just mix some of that yellow ochre with maybe some, one of your browns, maybe a Sienna or even a Van Dyke brown, and just get a little bit of a neutral color. We could even add some of that pink in there because Santa, as we know, has rosy cheeks and so forth. And then I'm gonna add water to that. So I get somewhat of a light value. So that to me looks like skin color. So these swatch sheets are really invaluable for you. <coughs> Again, what I added to that, and I'll put this in the tutorial kit so you have all these instructions to go with this video. The digital tutorial kits are 250. And then you should come with a drawing, a swatch, a picture of the original, um, and some instructions. There's a darker value. So I made that, and I'll put it in the swatch with a little bit of pink, some yellow ochre, and just a tad bit of Van Dyke brown, burned brown, to warm it up a bit. So that's his skin color. Um, I think that's going to be about it. I might go into maybe, let's see what this red looks like. I might just add a little bit of brownish red together for some of the um, darker areas and shadow areas of his hat. So we'll see. I, I went ahead and mixed that, but we'll, we'll see. And I think that's about it. Um, we could actually create like a grayish color, which you can actually get to gray by mixing um, opposites. 
let me show you here. So if we took a red, hold on, let me get a good red here. There's a red. And we took some of that green, which uh, I don't have my color. Yes, I do. If you ever want to create your own gray, red and green, just take opposites, purple and yellow, or blue and orange, or red and gray. They're opposite, contrasting on the color wheel, which means if you mix them together, you're going to get gray. You're going to get muddy colors or a shadowy color. So I'm going to take that red and I'm just going to mix that with some green and let's see what we get. Let's see what we can do here. Depending like you're seeing here, that red is a little bit cooler, so it's not quite creating, oops, hold on, the mud I want. So I'm going to keep playing with that. Let's just add in a little bit more green. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, let's see, let's try this one here. Well, I'm getting mostly a brown. I need to work on my color wheel skills, you guys. I kind of um, play with things till I get the right color. Let's see if I add in a little bit of yellow. Nope, I'm off. All right, well, <laughs> you guys, that was a fail. Let's just go for lightning and black. We'll have to do some color real work later. There we go. Okay. So I've got my colors here. Let's go ahead and start painting. Uh, we're going to do a lot of wet and wet. Um, so what I want to start with first, I think, is, oh, let's see. Let's start with his hat because it's at the top half and I don't want to run my hand across what I'm painting. So let's go ahead and start with that. Um, let's see. I'm going to get it wet. And as you know, I talk a lot about white space, so make sure you're leaving some white areas in there. There we go. Just getting it wet. And I'm also not creating petals here. I'm just creating a shine. Okay, and now I'm gonna go in with that red. Let's make it a little darker red. There we go. And I'm gonna go in with the washi color, so a lighter value. Hold it on, let me just pick that up. Okay, and let's start going into our hat. I'm using the side of my brush, laying down that color, making sure I don't do just this absolutely flat color across the whole hat. Just creating this glaze here. And then we'll go in and we'll add some highlights and shadows and all that kind of fun stuff. What I'm going to do here too is just go in, drop in some water so I get a little bit more washiness. There we go. You can even blow that around a bit. Okay, so we've got that wash, that first glaze over his hat. And then what I'm going to do next is let's just go into his, I think I want to do my fur more of a um, grayish, um, kind of rustic-y, whitish, 
but I'm going to do his face first because this is wet up here, so I don't want to paint what's right next to it. So let's go ahead and do his face. Now let me tell you, what we can do here is let's just draw our Santa a bit. You can start with, his face does not have to be like mine where I started kind of like that so I could get those cheeks. But really what you could do is you could just make your Santa a nice round happy face. And then we're gonna go right in the middle here and we're gonna create a little upside down half circle for his little nose, a tiny little nostril, come down, just very easy, keep it simple. And then of course his hat is going to be fluffy. So something like that. And then we'll have his hair and you can do however you want your hair. I kind of did two options here. This side is kind of more wavy and curly. This side's got some different qualities to it. And then coming out of his nose, not out of his nose, but the side of his nose, we're just gonna draw this big fun mustache. Like that. Another one right here. Big fun mustache, very fluffy. Okay, and in between a little, so here we did a C, we're gonna do the other C upside down. So the bottom of his lip, just like that. So look how easy that is so far. Cause really, I mean, Santa's got hair everywhere with his beard and his, his long hair. So he's relatively easy. Now for his eyes, I did kind of a C-shape eye, which you can do. I'm gonna do one of each on each side. So here's one. And then I created as if he's kind of smiling so much, the fat of his cheeks kind of squeezes up his eye like that. You could also, there's no problem with doing a Santa eye like that. Maybe even one of each, and this looks like he's winking. Add some little eyelashes. And then here, something like that, okay? So decide on what kind of eye you want. I'm then gonna do his bushy little eyebrows. And you guys are so good at coming up with your own Santa Clauses and different making all of my drawings kind of unique to you. I love it. I love seeing what you guys are doing. So there we go. We're basically done with Santa. Just some of his hair coming out here. And in here you could do little swirls. You could do S shapes like I've got. Lots of different choices here. You could add in, maybe he's got a little goatee coming out here, something like that. And there we go. We're done with our Santa face. We can add in the hat. Maybe you've got a bell on the end. Maybe you've got a pom-pom on the end of his hat. Can get creative there. And we're ready to go. So I hope that was easy enough for you to follow. Um, in my tutorial kit, I'll try to outline these. And you can choose you know, how you wanna do your eyes, how you wanna do everything just some little lines. And now we're gonna start to paint. So we've got his hat. You saw me do that, that was like a glaze. Now we're gonna go into his little face. And for his face, I'm gonna use my skinny brush, my six long round. 
and I'm going to go into that flesh color, which we made with the yellow ochre, um, with a tiny bit of brown, and just a tiny bit of pink. And we're going to go in with a very light wash around his face. And then we'll go in and lay down some darker areas. But right now we just wanna get a nice wash on his face. Look at that. Now remember watercolors always dries lighter, so don't panic if it looks really dark. Watercolors do dry lighter. Gouache can dry darker. Watercolors can dry lighter. And then while this is wet, I want to go in and maybe add in a little bit more pink on his cheeks, on his nose. Okay, so I'll pick up just a tiny bit of that pink, maybe water that down a bit and just touch in. Now, because this was wet up here, it spread. I didn't think about that. <laughs> so I'm gonna pick that up with a damp brush, a thirsty brush. And we'll just put a tiny bit of that on his cheeks. Maybe go around the edge of that to soften that circle because my, my paint had already started drying. So just wash your brush and rinse it if it didn't spread enough and just go around the edge like that. And there you go. We've already got his little cheeks, his little nose. Okay. Let's see, what should we do next? Let's go ahead and do his mouth and we'll do that, that pink color as well. Or it could be red. Let's mix a little pink and red. And go in. Let me look at my... Uh, <coughs> color chart here I did and see what I did on that. I think I did more of a red. If you have too much paint, just dab off like I just did. Just like that. And then his outer lip here. I'll leave a little bit of white right in the middle. So there we go. <laughs> this is where this six brush really comes in handy. I can really get in those tight areas. Okay. Now, as far as for his hat up here above, let's go to our bigger brush. So if you're using the Degatos, maybe a seven or an eight. And I'm going to go in with some gray. What we could do too is take your black and just add a little bit of white to it. And it creates kind of this chalkiness, which is nice. And we'll just kind of go in Let's maybe get this wet first. Don't have to be real perfect here. We might even want some white spots. And then I'm just gonna go in and drop in some paint, some of this gray paint that we have. Maybe 
some tiny bits of black in there, or even that Payne's gray. And let that kind of mix around. I might even blow on it. Add some water. So I'm just kind of moving some of this paint around in swirly motions and all kinds of little motions like that. And then what we can do is maybe towards the edges, we can make it a little bit darker, just like we've done with our snowman and his hat. just to make it look like it's kind of curving around. Maybe some more darkness on the bottom here. A little shadow under here where that fur is under the hat. And there you go, and it kind of gives it some texture I might even take a little tissue. I've just got this right now. Oh, you know what? I do have some tissue. I like using tissue. I think it's better. And just maybe tap here and there to add in some texture. I think that worked really well, actually. Kind of gives it a fuzziest texture. I might even go in there. Let's keep playing with that and add in, you know what, we've got our My Langs. If any of you are ordering this, wonderful, as you know, I know. You're probably sick of seeing it. I'm obsessed with it. These mirror metallics. And then I wanna cover his face because I don't necessarily want sprinkles on his face. Yeah, that's really pretty. There we go. I don't know if you can see that, but that's, that's really pretty. Just dab that in all around that beautiful fur. There you go. And I'm really, boy, during the holidays, I'm using that mirror series. Okay, so I think he's pretty well done. Let's just play a bit, one second here, with his eyes. And I, I actually, I'm debating if I should wait a little bit because his eyes are gonna be black. So however you do those, it's gonna be, might smear if you use some wet paint around it. So let's actually wait and do his eyes last. I'm back to my six long round. If all you have is your eight, just use your eight. Just use a very light pressure with the tip. But I've got um, my six here. So I'm going to go into that grayish color. And... Actually, let's wet his beard here with just a very light wash of that gray color. And then we'll go in and add in some dark little strands of hair. There we go. Now go in with that. And just start adding, going into your paint. And 
making sure you don't color that whole part in, okay? You can even lift some out with a clean brush. If you wanna create some more white space, something like that. Just kind of play with it. Let yourself kind of experiment. Put some of that paint in there. Lift some out. <clears throat> Just a little sweeping. So this will dry lighter, so I'm not real worried about the fact that it looks kind of dry right now. I'm sorry, dark right now. Because it will dry lighter. And I'm just lifting and then I apply a little bit more till I get that look that I want. And I think I'm pretty good with that right now. It does look a little grayer than I might want. We can always go in with a little white gouache there. So let's do the other side at a very light value. It's a little darker than I wanted, so just add some water. Create a very pale gray wash. This reminds me of the gnomes we did a while ago. Don't freak out if you get too much. You can always go in and lift like we did here. So that's a little dark for my taste. So I'm gonna dry off my brush pick some up you can do this while it's wet and there we go I think I'll go over that with some white gouache just to lighten it a bit look at that that helps. Also got a little dry brush going on there. Using the side of my brush so it really looks like whiskers. And I'll let that dry some more. Okay. Don't normally use that white gouache with my good Princeton brush. But that's okay. Alright, let's get his beard wet now. Got that white gouache everywhere. And I'll use my bigger eight brush for that. So I'm just gonna get his beard wet here. We can maybe even add in a little bit of gray. Now you may definitely want to lighten up yours. Mine's coming out rather gray. Really my vision was that it would be more white. That's okay. We're having fun. Make your Santa yours. Whatever that looks like for you. I am leaving some white spaces in there. He's got an awful lot of beard here. So really, you could probably use a 12 brush or maybe even bigger, maybe a 16. Till you get all this area wet. With some of that light gray paint, just getting it all wet. There we go. And all that in and then while it's wet I'll go in and drop in some of that gray this again this is just just like our little gnome we did now keep in mind you can do little curly cues you can do however you want your Santa's beard to look go for that 
So I gotta make a mix a tiny bit more gray here. Might just make what's coming out from right here a little bit darker. There we go. And as this paint dries, when you're making these lines, the drier the paint is, the more you're gonna see these lines. Because the wet paint, it's kind of blending in with. Just about out of my gray here. Ooh, let's get some white gouache on there. It's really important when you're working wet and wet to make sure you have enough paint so you're not having to mix more paint. And that's too dark. There we go. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with his little beard. <clears throat> and then I think what I want to do, maybe I'll even put the slightest, 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 I mean the lightest wash of yellowish, maybe here and there. Just to give, you don't have to do this. You can keep your guy all grays and whites. Perfectly fine. Make him yours. Whatever you want your Santa to look like. There we go. So <clears throat> I'm keeping in mind this will dry lighter too. Okay. So let's go in. <clears throat> And just add a tiny, tiny bit of brown. And we're just going to highlight. Now this is wet, so i got to be really careful. Using the side of my brush under the brim of his hat. And maybe under his nose to create like a little shadow, maybe on his cheeks. Then I'm gonna take a damp brush and just soften that line. You've seen me do so many times. There we go. And then I'm gonna basically keep his little eyebrows like that and maybe just go in. And we could, let's even use, let me see, let me grab my eight micron pen and go in here and I'm gonna draw his eye. I didn't plan to do this this way, but you know what? I felt called to, so. And then we'll draw in his um, eyebrows. Like that. There we go. I think that looks kind of good. Maybe his mouth. And there we go. Let's 
Let me put my cap on my pen. Once this dries, I think I'll even go in with some pen in here, but let's go in and color in his eyes. I'm using very light pressure with the tip of my brush. And I'm also going to leave a white spot in the middle of his eye. There we go. Yeah, just like that. Okay, I think that's good. I'm happy with that. Now what I might do is use a sponge for his pom-pom over here. I'm gonna go into that gray. Kind of ran out. Make a little pom-pom there. You could have even used this for um, his little hat too. I've used a sponge before for fur on Santa's hat. Something like that. Maybe even use that in our mirror metallics here. There we go. Yeah, this is typically how I used to do fur on hats actually, is with a sponge. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab a little bit more of that white. I, actually, let's add in some of that metallic to this pom-pom too. I'm getting really carried away with that sponge, aren't I? And I'm gonna put a tiny bit of that white gouache. Yeah, that looks good. Because he kind of got darker in some areas than I intended. That's okay. There we go. Now what happened there is I got some brown paint on there, you guys. Okay. Now the last thing I want to do is just go in around his hat and add in some darker areas. So let's take our eight brush and pick up a glaze of that red paint. Get rid of some of that water and we're just gonna go in and use this side of my brush. Go along here. Now I'll wash and rinse my brush and just soften that line. Okay, so it just looks like a shadow there. And then I'm gonna pick up a little more of that, tap off some, and I've gotta turn my painting here, whoop, and go along here. Maybe come out here. You can soften those lines with a damp brush. There we go. Okay, make that a tiny bit darker. There we go. Exactly like we did for our little gnomes. We're just adding in using the side of our brush, just some creases and then going in with a clean, damp brush, softening those lines. There we go. I even like this bleeding and blooming. Just 
softening those lines. There we go. Hi, my little kitty's here. Hi, kitty. Hi, kitty. You want some attention, huh? There we go. I think we're about done. Maybe soften those areas. I'm always softening my lines, as you know. You don't have to do that, but I, I kind of like those softer lines. That's up to you. Hi, kitty. He's clawing up the back of my leg now. Is it time for you to eat? And I think we're about done, guys. We could go in, maybe play with some of our, hi, Eden, our pen and just, if you wanted to add like detail, you may not want to do that. Something like that. Hi, Eden. There we go. And I think I'm pretty much done, guys. So I hope you enjoyed that. That was really fun. I, I did my best to kind of come up with the simpler Santa for you that didn't feel too overwhelming and I think we're done so I will make this tutorial kit with some of the drawings and the directions we just went through and again they're 250 when they're downloaded and I will list all my supplies and I think that's it thank you so much by the way the technique used here was wet and wet and we used our Princeton brushes or our Degados. We used a little bit of our white gouache and our Mylang paints and really just have fun. I gave you a few different choices on eyes and things and make him yours. All right, everybody. Thank you.